Okay, starting a new computer art tutorial here. What we're going to be doing today is photoshopping an abstract expressionist style portrait of any person of your choosing. And we're going to layer a couple of different effects um, and textures in here to create kind of this abstract expressionist portrait. So uh, first thing we're going to want to do is I'm going to go Command N and go ahead and start a new document here. We'll start with pretty standard document size I like to make for a lot of pieces. We'll go with width of 8 and a height of 10 inches and we'll start with a resolution of 72 because we are going to be borrowing some images from the internet for this piece. So going into getting this started what we need first is to go over to Google uh, Google image search and look for a metal texture and I kinda like this bare metal texture here um, bare metal textures is what you want to search. You'll find lots of results. Try not to grab something obviously that's been uh, protected with a kind of protective uh, watermark or anything like that. We're just going to copy this image, go back to Photoshop, hit Command V to paste it in, and I am going to maybe rotate this texture and then stretch it out a little bit so that it fills my canvas holding shift, dragging on the quarters, kind of keeps proportions, although with something like a texture, doesn't matter too much. Hitting return will keep my transformations, and now I'm ready to go on to the next step. So next thing we're going to want to do is choose an image of some person that you want to actually create this portrait from. Now, um, you can really choose any person. Um, I wanted to do someone that I thought is a really good writer, um, interesting character. Um, that would be kind of the person that you're looking for, I guess, for a portrait of this style. Somebody who's, you know, very odd or strange, maybe um, kind of a tortured person, if you will. Um, you know, Hunter Thompson is a well-known writer um, from his time very odd kind of writer, wrote some very interesting stories and tales, um, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas being one of my favorites. So I'm going to choose this black and white image um, of him. Uh, there aren't a whole lot of good color images I've already kind of scanned through here. Some of these are Johnny Depp from the role that he plays. Um, you can use a color image or a black and white image, doesn't really matter too much. Um, but I was going to go ahead and V, Command V, paste that in here, and then again stretch to fill your canvas so that it goes off the edges. We're going to make this portrait kind of fill up the entire page, and again return will kind of keep that um, selection steady. Now the other thing we're going to do is I'm going to hit Command A to kind of select my entire canvas area, and what I'm going to do is just crop each of these layers. So I'm going to click on layer 2, and then hit the crop button, and that should, if I hit enter, oops, enter, that will keep that cropped. So again, Command A, um, I'm selecting my texture layer now, and again, hitting crop, and oops, let's say don't crop. That just went to delete it. I think I hit delete instead. Oops. Uh, anyway, um, Oops, Command D is what I meant to hit there, not Command S. All right, so it looks like I actually cropped both layers, so they both fit to the canvas size here. You can't see them hanging outside the edges. All right, so now what I'm going to do is copy this layer uh, image because we're going to want to have two of them. So I'm going to right-click on this layer and then go down to Duplicate Layer to create another, and then move into changing the layer style of this first guy. So I'm going to turn off the visibility on this layer 2 copy. Layer 2 style we're going to mess with here and go down to color burn and what that's going to do is you can see it kind of blends this image with the image beneath it which is that metal texture. So we're already kind of on our way to you know an abstract expression like piece just combining the textures with the image. Um, so next thing we're going to do is add um, some adjustment levels to these layers. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the adjustment layer button here and the first one we're going to do is adjust the levels. And that just adjusts, this is going to adjust kind of the brightness and contrast of the image here. So what I'm going to do is take this number here which would be our, uh, our white point here and, um, and turn this 
output or input level down to 140. All right, and you can see that brighten my image a little bit. And then when we come down to the output level here, um, let's make this go to, we'll start at 60. All right, and so that you can see that kind of mutes the tones a little bit here. It doesn't make, there's not as much contrast going on. So if we just make those little adjustments, 140 and 60, in these two places here, that kind of balances our image out a little bit. Again, your image may be slightly different, um, so you may have to play with those numbers just a little bit more, but those should probably work. Um, next thing we're gonna add do is add a vibrance adjust layer. Um, and so basically all we're gonna do is just add some more vibrancy to the color here. Now again, you can choose to make you know, your color a little more or a little less vibrant depending on what your preference is here. I just wanna add a little bit of brightness to the color and maybe add a little more saturation to the color as well but maybe nothing too crazy here. That seems pretty good though, just to get a little more brightness out of the color there. Um, and next thing we're gonna do is we are going to add some filters. So we're gonna go to our filter menu up the top here. We're gonna go from filter down to distort. We are gonna do some distortion with this particular image. And what we're gonna again then go to is shear. And what shear will allow us to do is kind of make this image um, get uh, shifted off the side of the page. So essentially when you look at this when you first open it, you probably have a line that goes straight down the center of this here. Now what I'm gonna do is kind of just take this and pull it over a little bit, and then we can see what happens with our image. Oops, I don't think I had the right layer selected. I need to have layer two selected before we do that. Um, your bottom Im image layer. So again, gonna go to filter, distort, and shear, and then here we go. You can see the actual kind of preview of what this might look like here. So we're kind of just trying to tweak and make this kind of face shift off the page a little bit. Again, adding to that more abstracted effect here. And I'll say okay, and we'll keep this going on. So next thing I'd like to do is we're gonna go back to this top layer here, this layer copy that we made earlier. We're gonna turn this back on and we're gonna change this layer's layer style as well. So we're gonna go down to choose multiply for this one. Again, layer styles are just interesting, all different interesting ways to kind of blend an image with the layers underneath it. So again, you can see, we can see those uh, layers come through a little bit now that we've changed that layer style. And next we're going to do some more distortion to this actual layer as well. So we're gonna get and go to filter and then to distort. And we are gonna play with now the wave distortion. So when we go into wave here, um, these numbers are probably starting out all at zero here for you. And some, I believe, yeah, these are all gonna probably start out at zero. What we should see is just the image pretty much straight up. And then what we're gonna do is kind of adjust some of them a little bit. So what we can do is play with these sliders to see where we want to get distortion. Now we wanna get some good amount of distortion from this because we're trying to really abstract this image. So let's take the um, amplitude and we're gonna keep that up pretty, or keep this amplitude down low. And if we change this bottom max number, you can see that's where we really kind of get a lot of distortion. So we really wanna go for distortion. So change your amplitude. Um, wavelength, you can see if I go shorter, that's really making a lot of short lines. Let's keep them kind of on the big side. So these look like pretty good numbers as far as distortion here. We wanna really kind of abstract this image. And then I'm gonna say, okay. And so now what we can see is we kind of have this really abstract piece going here. And I think really the only other thing that I'd like to do is probably adjust the opacity of this top layer so that we can see more of the image that's underneath it and kind of bring that back out. So maybe somewhere around here, around 75 seems to be a good spot. And yeah, 75, 80, somewhere in there. So here you go. 
that's pretty much it for this particular tutorial. Um, Command-0 will make this fill my page, and so what we've done is created an abstract expressionism type portrait um, that really kind of reflects maybe the inner thoughts or kind of inner feelings of maybe someone who's, you know, a distraught artist or filmmaker, or writer, or something along those lines, um, musicians maybe, someone who's, uh, you know, an outwardly creative person would be a good person to choose. So hope you have a lot of fun and get creative with your own projects.